miracle vending machines to cheese caves, these guys can build just about anything. The question is, though, how does it taste? Meet the food jammers. <laughs> to make food with and uh, sometimes that contraption is really straightforward and there are other more elaborate contraptions like the taco auto taco vendor and that was really intense I mean we had to build something that would dose the meat into a taco and the, the taco had to be steamed and then you had to be able to put your sour cream and pico de gallo on it like your toppings and so to, to come up with something that was mechanized, that functioned, and tastes good, like that was, that was a big challenge. If you turn that a few times, then the chicken rolls off on a roll and then starts heating up down the side in the hot plate. Uh -huh. And then it slowly makes its way to the taco that's waiting there in the, in the rack. Okay. Well, it's really high tech. <laughs> it's, uh, as you, if you look below, you'll see that it's a small gas stove. It's got four burners. And we knew that we wanted steaming to be part of it. And so the material was kind of a natural extension of the bamboo steamer. There's like a drying area for the oily dumplings. There's a steaming area for the impatient dumplings. And the idea as well that, you know, there'd be enough space where you could actually jump in, flip a dumpling, and then dump out, jump out. And then you're far enough away that you're not getting the oil on your hands, which just happens a lot, mm -hmm. right? And, and, and making these stuff, and making the gyoza that happens all the time. Everything was considered for arms, arms reach in general. Like, so, you know, you can kind of reach across and, or get your neighbor to, you know, hand you a ravioli, but it's all sort of like within human scale. We're all about comfort uh, in terms of on the show. Like, it's all about trying to have a great food experience without having to work too hard once you're at the table. Mm. It's perfect. In our case, we, we go to farmers and we find out how they um, how they get the milk from the sheep so we can make the cheese. And then we build the cave so that we can put the cheese inside of an environment where it will mimic being inside of a, a real cave out in the countryside. And then so we are sort of holding hands with the ingredients all the way to the table. So it just makes it better, the food experience. Hello. Hi. I'm really curious about the spicing that is used in, in Mexican cuisine. Okay, great. Lots of spices. Mm -hmm. This is called chipotle pepper. It's very uh, hot. And here's the cheese cave. This is like the Alpen cheese cave. So you can see, all we did was we just took the door off of the fridge and we basically inserted a mountain and then put the door back on. And this way the cheese would age with conviction. And, and this is an exclusive? This is an exclusive picture of the cheese that we actually made. That's, that's one of the things about uh, our second season is that we're we kind of, there's a little bit more, we're able to be a little bit more ambitious and because we know the timing of how to, the schedule of the shows and stuff. And so making cheese is something that has mystified all of us and we were able to do it. And now it's you know not so scary anymore. Maple syrup evaporator with an add-on donair spit. Oh yeah. So you can eat a donair while you reduce your maple syrup. Yeah. Because yeah. it takes about like, you know, 12 hours to reduce a batch of maple syrup. Try it all out, but just don't sue us if it doesn't work. <laughs> oh man, this thing's totally crooked, dude. What? I was like, I thought that's the way well, you wanted it because you were holding it that way. Maybe people will take a way that they can do some of what we do. They don't have to do all of it. Some of my favorite meals have been on this show. Like some of the best meals I've had in my life. The future. <laughs> the future of fast food, right here. The number one is a taco. I, I have a, a dentist uh, whose daughter is, is in nutritional science. And she told her mother, you gotta watch the show. They're terrible cooks, but it's a lot of fun. And I told her that in season two, she might change her mind. And we're deep frying some uh, pierogies, which is probably uh, Sort of un untraditional or uncute. <laughs> yeah. uh, but we didn't have any other things, any other things to fry. So we're boiling pierogies here. Uh, we're steaming gyozas. This uh, is also untraditional. Untraditional. And then we're doing the traditional pan frying gyozas. And we've, we've pan fried them enough, so now we're going to do a little steam action. And Just doing our thing 
and I think that we're not trying to um, present too hard, and we're just just having fun making stuff. And I think that um, there's not a lot of that on television, and I think that is a nice uh, change. We're friends, like regardless of whether or not there's a show. So I think that that those those interactions translate to the to the TV show. being afraid to fail too. I think on TV things are either about uh, relationships going totally wrong or totally right. And uh, I like that we're always trying things. It's kind of like stunt cooking. We don't know if we're going to be able to do it. But the process is really fun. Mmm, and it looks tasty too.